Hello and welcome to another episode of Wrestling with Jonas. Wrestling with Jonas live, and I've got a fantastic guest with me, uh, the alpha female Jazzy Gabbert. So, Jazzy, uh, all the way from Germany, thank you for joining me today. How are you? Hi, thank you for having me, and thank you for everyone who's watching. <laughs> yes, indeed. And uh, this is a, an interview that I've been looking forward to uh, conducting for a long time now. Uh, it's an honor to speak to you. Uh, you know, I, I do want to encourage everybody that's uh, watching to uh, send in their comments, send in their questions for Jazzy uh, during this live port broadcast. And we'll do our very best uh, to answer them live. Uh, but uh, before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard, who is uh, kind of streaming this live broadcast, StreamYard permission to see your name as part of the comment or the question by visiting visiting streamyard.com forward slash Facebook. Uh, so, uh, you know, Jazzy, as I said, this is a bit of a dream interview for me. I said uh, while we're off air, I'm a little bit nervous because I've been wanting <laughs> to speak to you for a long time. And I have been a, fan, a genuine fan of yours for a while. But for the next 60 minutes or so, Jazzy, we're, we're going to be taking a bit of a deep dive into your your love for pro wrestling, um, your your kind of early years in the business, your, your time wrestling for stardom, TNA, the May Young Classic, of course. We need to touch on that. NXT UK and so much more, uh, including some fan questions as well, Jazzy. But uh, um, the first thing I want to ask you about is Jazzy Gabbert, the wrestling promoter. So uh, you've recently started your own wrestling promotion, Serious Sports Entertainment. So congratulations on that. Tell us about Serious Serious Sports Entertainment and uh, what inspired you to start your wrestling promotion, Jazzy? Uh, and, and what's the future hold for Serious? Mm -hmm. Serious sports entertainment, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's not just wrestling, but it's entertainment. It's dancing, it's singing, it's characters, it's like all of that. And it's not wrestling. That's why I call it uh, sports entertainment. Uh, and yeah, I have a lot of goals. You know, I have a lot of great thing in my mind. But of course, the pandemic was just hitting us on the right time. Uh, and I couldn't um, do my first show, but I'm on hold and, and I'm ready to go for it. Um, but till that, we need to wait. And then only then I can talk about future plans because right now nobody knows when we can do live shows again. But I already sold a lot of tickets and I have this amazing venue. It's beautiful. And that's actually why I have these thrones here. Um, there will yes. be a part of the setup. It, like these thrones are not here because I'm like feeling like a queen. It's my setup. <laughs> going to be on the on the stage. Like my wrestling show will not that the ring is in the middle it will be actually like on the stage like a cinema and the ring will be golden and red and then there will be like these chairs where the ring announcer and the ring girl was sitting on it um and it, everything will be like royal like that will be theme, you know that sounds amazing and i can't wait to witness that when it happens and i think you've got a, a tentative date in mind but it's a, a year from now isn't it is it uh, 2022 that you you kind of have in mind jazzy yeah, it's like February 20, 2022. Yeah, because I don't believe that we can have this um, this year any shows. And I already sold like 400 tickets and I'm planning on selling like 800 about uh, because that's how many people fit in into the arena. Um, so, yeah, I don't think that we can have anytime soon any bigger, you know, show. So I'm going to play it safe and schedule my show for the next year. Yeah, and it, it sounds very unique. Um, I love the idea of having the, the entertainment as part of it as well. And we look forward to seeing the, the thrones and all of the acts and, of course, the wrestling. Um, but uh, that's going to be amazing. And we've only got a year to wait, so it's definitely going to be worth the wait, I'm sure. But uh, let, let's um, skip all the way back to when you were a younger Jazzy Gabbert. Um, what sort of impression did wrestling have on you as a youngster and kind of how did you first come across pro wrestling as a, as a youngster then, Jazzy? Yeah, I came first time to wrestling when I was 10 years old. Um, me and my family we were about to move the house and one of my brothers throw like a wrestling book away like he didn't need it. I didn't even knew that he ever watched it. I don't even know why he had that book. But I found this book and I can remember I saw Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart and Undertaker and, and Hulk Hogan and I was just so fascinated. They were so strong. They were so colorful. And then I tuned in on the TV and mm -hmm. 
yeah, mm -hmm. it got me. It sucked me right in and I couldn't let go of it. And when I was 13, I had like, I watched my first live show and I remember I was a big WCW girl. Ah. So <laughs> that was like Nick Patrick when he always, you know, faked his neck injury. And yeah. uh, I remember my favorite team, uh, the American males, they were like on top and they were like covering one, two. And then he's like, oh, my neck and me, little Jazzy in the first row. I'm like, you cheating, you cheating. And he's like, interacting with me you know and that you know even it sucked me even more into it yeah. and yeah that's how I became a big wrestling fan because I was going to say I mean WCW and WWF they used to tour uh, the UK and, and Europe and Germany as well quite often in, in the 90s and they still do when of course they are allowed yeah. to tour but uh, back in the 90s I mean American wrestling was huge in, in Germany mm -hmm. wasn't it and, and when they did used to tour the UK and Germany they were like rock stars it was like you know the, the, you know, the Beatles all over again the, the reaction they would get outside of the arenas and in the arenas and you said you you, you, your first live experience was at a WCW show. Um, but, uh, I mean, who else were some of your favorites growing up? I was definitely um, Sting. Like I, I, like, I was a fan when it all happened with Hulk Hogan when he cheated on a Macho Man. You know, that was, like, my big breaking point. I, I was a teenager, and you know how it is. Like, you don't trust anybody. And, no. and you, you're just sad. You're just a sad human being. <laughs> and then when Hulk Hogan did that to uh, Macho Man, I was so – I was crying all the time, and I felt like – thing you know he was like you don't really know what he's doing you just know he's upset because of the whole situation how the whole outside has been bullies like I had bullies in school and then we had like bullies on TV, you know? And yeah, I was a big, big um, Sting fan, Stinger fan. Lex Luger, of course, Machi Man, I loved him. But I was also, I don't know if I can say it, but I just do it. I was a Chris Benoit fan. I loved him so much. I love Dean Malenko, Eddie Guerrero. I love the whole technical stuff. Yeah. So yeah, that like, that was my favorite time WCW. I, I didn't watch so much of WWE. Um, back then it was WWF, but I, I was a WCW girl. Yeah, because it was on uh, RTL, I think, and uh, over in the UK, yeah. we would sometimes watch the WCW pay-per-views on a, like a, an RTL channel. It would have German commentary, uh, but we would, <laughs> we would kind of understand what was going on in the ring, not necessarily <laughs> that what was being said at the, at the booth. But um, we've got some, some kind of people that are reaching out saying... Uh, uh, you go, Jazzy. Uh, there's um, a edge there that loves your vision. Um, and um, yet yeah, another comment that they love the idea of the, the, the panto uh, on stage uh, and kind of the, the whole vision of uh, Sidious uh, wrestling, of course. Um, but uh, at what age, Jazzy, did you uh, get the urge to start your wrestling training then and want to become a pro wrestler? Mm, I have to say, I never been a sports girl, you know, like even in school, I was always so ashamed. I was super shy. I was skinny as hell I was pale and I was just not from this earth <laughs> I was so shy and I could never imagine to step in the ring myself you know in school I always get like the worst grade because I never attended to school I, I was so ashamed to even dress up right like change the, the, the sports gear um, and then one time I asked my mother if I can go to Olympic wrestling but she didn't allow me like she was not supportive at all like I couldn't do anything so my life was kind of you know, hopeless. <laughs> and then eventually I moved to Berlin when I was like um, 16, 17. Um, and then I had still a strong love for wrestling, but, you know, life came into the way. Uh, and then with 18, I discovered a German federation. Like I didn't even know that in Europe or even in Germany that wrestling exists. In my little brain, only American wrestling existed. And then I had like this flyer and I saw this German promotion and I went to it and then I saw two girls there. And they weren't that much different from me. They were also skinny, they had dark hair. And I was like, wait a minute. Wow, I want to try this too. Like, I have no idea if I can do it. I don't have confidence at all. But I like what I see and I want to give it a try. And so I went to the wrestling school and they said no. 
I said, no, you're not allowed. You're not strong enough. We don't want you here. And I'm like, please, wrestling is my life. I want to do it. And then three months, I had to beg them. I, I went there every day. I said, please, I want to train. And they thought, eventually, I'm crazy. You know, they thought, like, what is what she doing? And then, <laughs> <laughs> then they allowed me to do the training. But in the end, they told me, like, you know, like years later, they told me they just wanted to take my money and they knew that I won't last. But, well, they didn't mess with me. So <laughs> I come to the training and they beat the hell out of me. Like I had a black eye, like bleeding and all that. And every time they beat me up, right? And after like six months, they saw, okay, she's staying, you know, like she's not going. And keep in mind, when I started, that was like 2000. We didn't have like internet like we have today. There was no Twitter. There was no Facebook. So I had no idea wrestling is not what it's supposed to be right of course, of course. so i thought it all real and i thought it have to be like this you know i thought they punch me that's wrestling that's how it goes right and then they set me down and they explained me everything and i'm like you lying why no you lie what your michael is not in hospital they're like no i'm like no you lie <laughs> and then yeah eventually they told me everything and then the fun started because it didn't hurt as much as before anymore. And I got actually my first request. So in April 2001, they asked me if I want to have my first match. And of course I wanted. And it was exciting. I cannot remember a lot. I know it was a three-way dance and I got like a chair shot. And then I stayed on the crown and I get up. I got another chair shot. One, two, three. I didn't win. I know that. <laughs> Is there any footage of your debut match anywhere? Do, do, do you know that it's kind of out there on the internet somewhere? I think it is somewhere, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. And you started your career as, as Jazzy B, didn't you? Yeah. Um, but talk us through that transition and, and the circumstances that led to the change from Jazzy B to what eventually became Alpha Female character. Uh, yeah. well, why, why did you feel that you had to make that change to your character mm -hmm. during that time then, Jazzy? I mean, if you look at Jazzy B, uh, she was like her gimmick was that she's a dancer from St. Pauli, like from the red light district from Hamburg. Right. I had nothing to do with it. I didn't feel comfortable. I hated my outfit. I hated the dancing. It was just not me, you know, like I never go to party or anything like that. So it wasn't my thing. But they told me back in the days, my trainers and they say they have the control over us because, you know, um, that sex sells and because I can wrestle, which is normal because I just started, right, um, that I should try it this way. But after years, you know, like after five years, I kind of got really sick and sick of the, the, the idea of dancing in the ring and portraying this kind of character. And I started to gain confidence, you know, so I thought I don't want to be this kind of girl, you know, I don't want to portray this woman. Um, and then... I kind of, a part, I parted with this company. I said to the trainer, I'm sorry, like, it's really amazing what you teach me, but I need to move on. Like, I don't feel comfortable here anymore. Uh, and then they said, okay, if you part ways with us, you cannot be Jazzy B anymore. I'm like, yeah, fine. I don't want to be Jazzy B anymore anyway. Uh, and then there was a time where I needed to find my character, right? And then I had a, boyfriend back in the day who was also a wrestler and he been on a show and he said something to the girls there which is by the way not true he said that I'm sitting at home and I'm jealous it's not true and they said oh Jazzy is jealous she's the alpha female and that's why we picked the name you know <laughs> and, and it's uh, a fantastic name it's a fantastic uh, a nickname and it really yeah, kind of jumps absolutely. jumps off the page but uh, the alpha female look You've got a yeah. very unique look, and mm -hmm. um, the, the, your outfits are always fantastic. You you look like a superhero, or dare I say, maybe a, a super villain when you're in the ring as well, because you're a, a heel, of course, most of the time. Um, mm -hmm. But um, and you're also a, a bit bigger and, and stronger than a lot of your other opponents. When mm -hmm. did the, the look, the image of the alpha female Jazzy Gabbert first happen, and kind of when did that kind of image first come into your head? Yeah, so it was kind of a process. Like I wanted to use black long pants because black make you skinny. <laughs> and I wanted long pants because, you know, I wasn't confident. I was a skinny girl and especially looking back, I looked tremendous awesome. 
<laughs> but you know, so I want, but still, I want, I didn't feel well, so I wanted long pants. And the gold was because gold is for champions. So I had like this gold waist, and I was like, yeah, because you know, you have to dress as the person you want to be, you know. And a little bit later in my career, it was like 2008, I was on tour with Brett the Hitman Hart, and I was asking him, I'm like, you know, I was still in the, in the, time of finding myself like I didn't have the hair yet uh, the outfit was still there but not perfect so I was asking him so sir can you help me like I kind of need a character you know I need something I can bring to the game uh, and he said to me there's two ways to find your persona uh, in the ring so one is you take your own personality and you turn up the volume to like 100 yeah. um so basically when you're like a funny person you should volume it up and you like super funny in the ring right um but i thought well i'm pretty lame so i should not <laughs> turn it up <laughs> <laughs> and then he said the other thing is what you can do be the person you want to be in the ring and you know again when i started wrestling there was no internet and all that stuff you know so I always needed a person I look up to, like a strong woman I look up to, like that's what I was missing. Like my family was not really great, so I didn't even have a mother I can look up to, right? So I thought, hmm, I wanted to portray a strong, independent woman who can kick ass, you know, uh, but I was still skinny. So I needed to hit the gym <laughs> and I trained. I trained like a crazy person and I became bigger and bigger. And yeah, and then... Yeah, and then the uh, famous, I don't know if it's that famous, but I told it before, I went to a tryout for TNA and I met Bully Ray and everyone who knows Bully Ray knows that he's uh, super direct, like he's not holding back. Yeah, which, it's very opinionated, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, which can be good, but can be not good too. <laughs> but he said to me back in the days, like keep, like, keep in mind, I was still skinny, I had like pale skin and I had long brown hair and I had the try out there and it, it was bad it, I, I was I sucked like it was really bad and but still I wanted his opinion you know I still wanted to hear what he gotta say you know even if it's bad I still of wanted course. to hear and give him the respect he deserves you know um, but he was yelling at me and he was saying like do you think you're as sexy as our girls and I'm like well, no, like these girls are super sexy. Like, you know, Angelina Love and Velvet Sky. Come on, they're like, they're like next level sexy, you know? So I was like, yeah, no, of course not. And then he said, there you have your answer. And then I went back home crying and I'm like, oh, I can never be that sexy. And then I shaved my hair, like my long brown hair. I shaved it all off, right? Wow. And like, if I cannot be sexy, I want to be the bad monster who kills all the beauty girls, you know. Uh, and then I became ugly, you know. Like, I, I love to call it ugly. Like, everyone say, oh, don't be so harsh. But it is what it is. In the ring, I'm not sexy. I'm, like, really, I'm scary in the ring. So I shaved my hair. And then I had, like, here, like, the the mohawk, you know. I, I bleached it blonde. And then the famous alpha female look started. Like, I had, like, blonde. And I, I painted here a little bit black. And I was like the monster, you know, and I, I, I love this gimmick. And I'm really thankful that he was so harsh to me because other way I would be maybe still lost. Uh, have, have you ever spoke to uh, Bully Ray since about that, that meeting no. uh, first time round? And uh, uh, how did that conversation go the second time round? No, 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 never. You, I mean, yeah, I haven't. know, like, I spoke in an interview before about it, and someone tagged him, and someone told him, and I, I think he knows the story, but, yeah, we never talked. Yeah, again, no. I don't have any, I don't know about him, about me, but right. I, I don't have any, you know, like, bad feelings about him. Like, I appreciate that he even took the time for me, you know, and I, and I know his role, you know, he has to be he has to be, you know, like serious and all that. And you cannot take everybody. Like there's so many wrestlers who want to make it to the big stage. But, yeah. you know, sometimes you have to tell the people the truth. And I prefer the truth, even it hurts, instead of someone, you know, you just... And it, and it helps you to it. develop your look as well. It helps to develop your look and your gimmick uh, and, and what we're familiar with today, Jazzy. Yeah, absolutely. 
Absolutely. And I want to talk a little bit about uh, Pro Wrestling Eve, because mm -hmm. you started wrestling over here in the UK for Pro Wrestling Eve. Um, mm -hmm. And it was um, it was during that time when you got noticed by a Japanese promoter, mm -hmm. uh, wasn't it? So um, uh, they gave you your first opportunity over in Japan. Uh, tell us about the opportunity, because you did several tours with Stardom, didn't you? Uh, yeah. And you had a, a very successful time in Stardom. Um, almost straight away from your first tour, you were successful over there and you were a very big hit with uh, the fans over in Japan, weren't you? Yeah, so 2012, I got, uh, or was it 2010? Around that time, I, yes. I think it was 12. I got the chance from Pro Wrestling Eve, you know, to um, work for them, and I'm really grateful. Um, yeah, they gave me the chance. They built me up like a really strong monster. They even gave me the chance to be the champion which I was like super proud. I took the championships to different TV shows, even a league of their own. I had the championship there on national TV in the UK. Uh, so I was like a really proud champion. And then one day they brought in the Japanese people, um, Hikaru Shida, who is now in AEW. She was there and she had a match with me. And, and there were talent scouts from um, Japan. Like basically there's like a person who's searching for talents and then he contacts the different promotion in Japan to tell them, hey, I was in Europe and I saw this this person. So Stardom picked me up. They liked the way I looked, you know, and then I had my first tour. The first tour was only two weeks and I was nervous as hell. Like this was never in my dream. Like I never wanted to go to Japan, to be honest. And I watched a documentary, it called Gaya Girls. Right. And I was petrified. I was so scared because I saw bloody things like they <laughs> were drop kicking the one girl in the face and she had to apologize, you know, and I'm like, man, <laughs> I like American wrestling. I don't want <laughs> and then I arrived at the airport and we went straight to the training and I see um, the girls like, ah, you know, like punching each other. I'm like, Woo, that's just the training. <laughs> and then they asked me if I can do like a 30 minute match against Nanae Takahashi. And of course I said yes. But in my head, I was like, no, I'm not <laughs> capable of doing something like this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, somehow I survived. And for some reason, I did a good um, impression. And they asked me if I want to come back. But they actually asked me after the two weeks, they asked me if I want to come like a long time. Um, but I was, I was scared. And I said, can I try three months first, you know, <laughs> if I survive, then we can talk another one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then I went over the second time for three months and I won the championship. I have it tattooed on my arm because it was such a difficult and tough time. And like, not just the match itself, it was like super difficult. Like I lost my teeth and I had a concussion. So it was a strong yeah. match, you know, and I'm still or I was long time the first European, like I was the first European, only European the whole time to hold a Japanese title. So that was like a huge honor for me. And Nanae Takahashi, she wasn't beaten for two years. So it was a tremendous honor, right? So that's why I tattooed it. Um, yeah. That's amazing. That's and, fantastic. And Please like continue. Yeah, for the third tour, they actually signed me like long time. They said, um, you can stay as long as you want. <laughs> Yeah, they obviously loved you over there. But uh, yeah. I mean, you, you've just explained that you spent a long time over in uh, Japan, Jazzy, and uh, uh, not just for the wrestling, but you called it home for quite a while, didn't you? And you mm -hmm. made some really, really good friends there. But uh, what, did, what did you enjoy most about the Japanese lifestyle and the Japanese culture when you were over there for all, their, all that time then, Jazzy? Yeah, just everything. I mean, especially the safety, I think. Like, safety for me personally is a, a big thing, you know. Like, in Japan, you can leave your back open, all the money looking out. Like, you can have your phone laying there. Nobody in the world will steal it, you know. And nobody will touch you. I mean, nobody touches me anyway because I'm that yeah. strong. But, <laughs> you know, and I love, like, how clean it is. Like, everywhere it's so clean. And when you go, for example, for the bus everyone stays in line no one will like push you away or something and it's just so incredible like i love the country and the food is amazing and yeah i met my family over there masahiro chono and his wife they're like my family now like we meet at least twice a year in japan or they come to germany and i met my first 
love. Like I fall in love with the Japanese men over there. Um, unfortunately, because of, you know, language barrier and just the cultural thing, it didn't work out, but I can say I was deeply in love. So <laughs> I have always a special place for Japan in my heart. Indeed, indeed. And uh, <laughs> a, a, a wonderful story about uh, Masahiro Chono and his German wife and how close you are. And like I say, you are family now. And uh, yeah. that, that's incredible. And and they live uh, over in Germany sometimes and you see them no, occasionally they, they, for big events. No, they live in Japan, in Tokyo, right. but they, they have family in, in, in Germany, in Bremen. And we for Christmas, for example, like in Germany, Christmas time is the best. So, of course, they come over yeah. and spend some time here and then we meet up and have Christmas time together. Yes, yes, absolutely fantastic. And, uh, you know, a, a great kind of father figure to have and uh, mm -hmm. a, a legendary Japanese wrestler as well. But um, was it around this time, Jazzy, that uh, you, you started to get into MMA? You started your MMA career? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, like, first of all, like the training for stardom, it was super difficult. It was so hard. Like, it wasn't much different than what you do in the ring, actually. And you do like a lot of shoot wrestling for a warm up, you know. Uh, and so I thought, okay, I need to step up my game, you know, I need to, you know, practice that also. So I went to a Japanese MMA gym. There, I fall in love with my like with one of the people there. Uh, he was an MMA fighter, uh, and because of that, it was so much fun. Like you know, like I like I had four hours training for wrestling, and then I went straight to the MMA gym and had another four hours training. You know, I was so high on energy, and I trained so much, and I really loved it. And you know, then I decided I want to have a real fight because most of the time, which is super annoying, like wrestling fans, but also like outsiders, not, I wouldn't say the wrestling fans because they know how tough wrestling is, but like people who don't like wrestling, you know, they say, oh, wrestling is fake and you're just a fake athlete. And I wanted to show them, dude, I work so hard and I can literally beat everyone. Like, you know, I can go out and I'm strong, you know. Uh, and that was my main intention, like why I wanted to do an MMA fight, you know. Yes, absolutely. And would you say that um, you carried over in any of your MMA uh, training into pro wrestling when you started wrestling again after your MMA career? Oh, yeah, yeah. I still use the crown and pound punches, right. uh, the back fist, you know, uh, I do the punches in the corner. Um, and I still, you know, these days I have like, you know, like the walk of a fighter. So, yeah, I, I mix these two up, you know. Indeed, yes. Uh, and your ground and pound is, is very kind of noticeable in the ring. But uh, I've got a, qu a quick question from yeah. uh, one of our listeners that's uh, uh, viewers, actually, it's watching us live on YouTube. But from uh, Eve, uh, Riot Girls of Wrestling, uh, Jazzy, have you ever mm -hmm. uh, got more tattoos since uh, we last worked together? So I don't know if uh, Eve is familiar to yourself. Um, well, but, I just uh, got a message from Dan Reed, so ah, <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, so, like, my whole body is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, the people who saw me at the May Young Classic noticed that I wasn't that much tattooed, so everything kind of started afterwards, you know. <laughs> indeed, but indeed. There's one missing, and I remember that I promised my E family that I will have the apple tattooed and I'm going to do that well. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. And one of our Facebook viewers has asked her, have you ever wrestled Kairi Sane? Now in stardom, she would have been known as Kairi Hojo, but uh, have you ever wrestled yeah. Kairi? Many times. And I can tell you guys, she's the toughest. She's so tiny, but dude, like her hands, they're like knives. She chops like, woo. And I, I remember I had like a match with her. <laughs> like I had few matches with her but this one is in particular in my head because uh, it was so crazy so I'm on my knees to level her up right she <laughs> got me somehow down so she slaps me right like 10 times bomb 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 I'm like oh my god and she started running but for some reason, something hit her in the head, like, oh, I need to slap her one more time. So she turns around, give me another slap. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dude, 11 slaps? Are you serious? <laughs> Uh, oh, Curry, so Curry Sane is, is one of my auto favorite wrestlers as well. Me but uh, that's absolutely fantastic. 
like like outside of the ring she's the mm-hmm. most amazing amazing yeah amazing Girl. Indeed. And um, I mean, you mentioned briefly earlier uh, that you worked very briefly for TNA during a European tour of theirs in 2014. Mm-hmm. Uh, you worked some, some tag matches and one or two singles matches during that tour as well. How was the overall TNA experience for you during that time then, Jazzy? Mm-hmm. I have like one of my favorite experiences was the gut check. Uh, I don't know if you know, um, I was there with also... Um, uh, Nikki Cross, she was also there with me. Shana was also there at the gut check with me. So it's so amazing to see where these people all go, you know. So Shana yes. is now AW, uh, uh, yeah, Nikki Cross is WWE. So it's amazing. So, but that was like one of my favorite, um, yeah, how you say, experience because we're standing in the line, right? And then there's D'Lo Brown and he was damn serious. So he comes right close to my face, right? I'm nervous as hell. And he's like, like, tell me, why are you here? Why you deserve to be in my ring? And, and stuff like this. I'm like, oh, holy shit. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then he's doing this joke, something like that. I have his email address and that I'm sending in all the time emails. And then, you know, we do like some wrestling. And then in the group, they say, oh, uh, and then send me your matches. And if you need to know the email address, ask Jesse. And I'm like, I don't have a email address. Like, I really don't. <laughs> you know, and then I get home and I check, do I ever wrote him? Like, no. Like, I don't know where this joke came from. <laughs> but, yeah, that was, like, one of my favorite experiences because after that, I got noticed from um, TNA and then they let me do these matches. You know, this little storyline I had with Velvet Sky uh, and Chris Sabin. That was amazing. Great uh, experience. I was Wembley. That was a big dream. I always wanted to, you know, do like a, one of these big arenas. So, yeah, good time. Uh, Jazzy, I, I've got to talk to you about the May Young Classic now, 2017. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it, at the time for WWE, it was a, a very unique concept. Um, and they brought in 32 of the best unsigned female talent from around the world, didn't they, for this tournament? Um how did you first get involved with the May Young Classic, the, the first tournament? Because, of, of course, they did it again in 2018. But mm-hmm. the 2017 first ever May Young Classic tournament, how did you get involved with it? Um, who got in touch with you and who reached out to you at the very beginning uh, to kind of get the ball rolling then, Jazzy? Yeah, I have to take a little bigger route here. So I have an MMA match in Japan, right? I have this huge fight against uh, King Rainer, And I was supposed to wrestle or fight... Uh, um, Gabby Garcia, right? That was like the main goal. So, but now I'm having like this black belt girl in front of me, right? I'm having this huge MMA match, 22,000 viewers like on an area wow. and I lost, like I lost. Oh my God. And I went backstage and I cried my heart out because now I lost MMA. I thought I lost it all. Like I, I, everybody will laugh at me, right? I didn't have wrestling at the time. My Japan time was over. WWE said no to me again and again and again. So I had like few um, tryouts. So I was like, what do I have to do now? Like, oh. And then they announced the May Young Classic and I had a little bit of hope, right? Um, but then I announced people and people and I thought, okay, like, that's it. Like, it's over. My career is over. Like, nobody loves me. <laughs> and then finally, two weeks before the they do the taping, right, I got a call from WWE and they said, there may be, there's maybe a chance for me to be there. Only maybe. And I was like, oh, I take it. Whatever it takes, I take it. You know, like, whatever I need to do, I do it. Um, and then everything went so quick. Like, they did the visa for me and I flew over. I do the... Um, the health check and all that stuff, you know, and then I was on and then they told me I even have a match, you know, so it was amazing. <laughs> Indeed. And they, and I want to kind of talk to you about that because um, the, the reaction from the fans, Jazzy, during that May Young Classic was, was crazy. And I, I don't think anybody was quite expecting the reaction that you got. And I don't even think that you were expecting the reaction that you got. And that first round match against Abby Leif, um, you know, and watching it back, I said to you off, off air before we started recording or before we went live, that I got goosebumps kind of watching it back this week. And I think you, you probably get goosebumps every time you think about it, but um, 
when you started laying in the offense, the crowd just went wild. The, the you mm-hmm. know, the full sale arena and the fans just erupted. Um, but uh, how how did that the fan reaction, Jazzy, make you feel when it was kind of happening in real time? And and how did you feel kind of after the match had ended as well? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, when you're in the ring, like for me, it's like that. It, I'm not myself. Like it feels really like you're a in demon the zone. Yeah, like a demon. Like it's not myself. Like because I'm a person, I'm scared. Like I'm scared sometimes, and I feel pain. I hate if someone punch me. You know, I don't like it. Uh, but in the ring, you know, like it's so different. Um, all I do also is remember like the things I need to do, and I try to be as professional as I can be. You know, and I knew it's important to look into the camera to show intensity. You know. Uh, but I think I remember is that Abby hit me like super hard on the chest. And I'm like, I'm thinking myself, hey, dude, why you're so, why are you laying it in so much, you know? <laughs> and then like I push her and we scream at each other. And then I'm like, wow, these people are really into it. Like, let's go on, you know? Um, and then there's like something small happened in the ring that d- didn't work out like I wanted to do. So I became like, ooh, I'm panicking, but nobody noticed and I won't no. tell you what it was. Um, and you know, I can save it. And then I'm doing like these punches in the corner and I, I, I see again, whoa, I'm like, well, wow, they really like what I'm doing. And then I had like this one big punch, right? Can you remember when I like really snapped at her and she's yes, falling into the corner? She flew into the corner. Yes, it I remember made that. made a huge sound like bang. And I'm like, oh, that worked really well. And everyone <laughs> like, whoa. <laughs> it was amazing. And then I lost and people were like, oh. And I was like, well, that was my dream. Like I always said, I want one match in WWE. And deep from in my heart, I knew that the fans will love me. I don't know why, but I think that the fans will love a character like Alpha Female, you know? Yeah. But right. I never I never got yeah. the chance, but this time I got the chance. And I remember before my match, I was so freaking nervous. And I called one of my friends and I was kind of bitching to him. I'm like, oh, what should I do? What should and he's like, dude, relax, just be you, you know? And that's all what I did. Like I was just the person I've been the last 20 years, you know, I, I did what I did always and I didn't change a lot, you know, and it was incredible. And then the match was over. I gave her a big hug. And then for me, it was over. I knew, okay, this was my career. Like now I'm finished with wrestling. That's what I thought in my head. That's what I thought when I went backstage. Right. And then backstage, there was Shawn Michaels and he was like, so super hyping me. He's like, wow, Jazzy, that was so good. Wow. 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 I'm a big fan of you. And I'm like, well, I'm a big fan of you, you know, like it was <laughs> insane. And then everybody came around and said, Congratulations, wow, wow, wow. Well. And it was it, it was really cool. And then the fun part was next day I thought, you know, I have nothing to do. Like nobody told me anything. So I was like uh, dressed up really nice and I gave everybody like fist bomb. I'm like, hey, have a good time, have a good match. You know, I took a little bit care of my friend Kyrie Sane. Um, I helped her, you know, with the outfit and everything. And I tried to make myself useful. And then um, Tessa Blanchett came along and she said, Jesse, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, just hanging out? And she's like, we have a match. I'm like, what? She's like, we have a match. And I didn't know. And I was like, whoa, you know, and then I dress up and everything. And then, yeah, I had the best time of my life. Like till today, it was the best thing ever. So we're backstage, right? One girl, next girl, next girl. And I was the fifth, right? And I remember Triple H was standing with me backstage and now my music hit and it was just one, you know, like, burr, and the people were like, whoa, they were already like really loud. And I'm looking at him and like, I'm like, oh, whoa. And, you know, my my song has like three, um, how do you say, like three beats. Like the first beat, I walk out. The second beat, I lift my flag. And the third beat, I walk. But the fans were so loud, I couldn't even hear it. So I was like super <laughs> confused. And I had such a hard time to stay serious. Like I needed to smile because I was so overwhelmed. And I'm like, mm, not smiling, oh, not smiling. <laughs> and Show Mike had said later to me, oh, we're, nobody told you you were allowed to laugh? I'm like, no, nobody <laughs> told me. <laughs> but you, you, the alpha female, the alpha female doesn't laugh. But going down that oh. ramp, you, your reaction <laughs> was you, you, you couldn't believe what was happening. You were, yeah. they were, they were saying, we want Jazzy 
please sign Jazzy. Yeah. And uh, every time you got into the ring, uh, that full sale crowd, they mm. just erupted again and again and again. But uh, mm. uh, I mean, after the match, did you get a good reaction from the the other talent, the other wrestlers backstage? And uh, um, well, I mean, you, you must have been overjoyed with uh, how that all went. And of course, you got the, the winning uh, pinfall as well in that match. Yeah. I mean, it was so super awkward to me. Like I'm in the ring with Tessa Blanchard, hello, yeah. and Kaylee Ray, hello. You know, like these amazing young talented women, and on the other side it was like Santana Garrett. You know, like I was like, I'm so little, but they're ch they're cheering my name. Like I was like, because before I remember I was so well before people were telling me already because I'm 38 now. When that happened, I was like 35 or something. So they told me already, you need to pass the torch, right? And I was a little bit like heartbroken about it because I thought I never had my moment. Like, why do I need to pass my torch, right? And now I'm in the ring with these young superstars, but they cheering my name, right? It felt so awkward. And I, I was really like, I wanted to enjoy it, but I couldn't, but I wanted, you know, like I was like, Ugh. and then I, when you look at the footage, I'm the first one who's out there. You know, I, I went straight to the locker room. I was so ashamed. Um, and they were cheering my name. And I, I was look around, even the rock's mother was there and, and, you know, Simon, the daughter, she was there and they were like clapping. Ronda Rousey was there. They were clapping. And I'm like, this is a dream, like this is not reality, you know. Um, yeah, it was amazing. And then I came backstage, and I mean, you know how it is, of course, like the trainers and everyone was there, but the other wrestlers, well, you know how it is sometimes. Yeah, they're busy with their own stuff, you know. So yeah, I, I've got I've got a question from uh, from Irej, uh, and he asks uh, in in retrospect, um, if you won against Abby Lath in the first round, who would you like to have faced as a potential second round opponent? Then Jazzy. I would have loved to have another match with Kyrie Sane, you know, because. Uh, she is a fighter, and she understands my style, and I understand her style. Like, and there is like. Mm, psychology in, in, in the wrestling with me and her, you know, as much more as I beat her up and she's so tiny and little and as much as I beat her up and she's like dying but still surviving, as more the people love her and as more they hate me. And that's what I want, right? I'm yeah. bigger, I'm the bully. They they I want them to hate me. So we would have like uh we would have had the perfect Japanese match, hard hitting, strong style and yeah. I would have loved or against Tony Storm because she's a young rock star, you know, and I, I love her style too. And then, yeah, sexy and monster, you know, I think that would have worked really well too. Yeah. I agree. I agree. But um, I think that, that you were made um, after those two matches. You were you kind of uh, over with the fans, most definitely uh, on a on a bigger worldwide uh, setting. But uh, am I right in thinking that WWE they they were so impressed that they offered you a contract mm -hmm. following the Bay Young Classic? Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us about that because things took a, a bit of an unfortunate turn, didn't they? After you were offered the contract, um, I I'll, I'll, let, I'll let I'll let you explain, Jazzy. Yeah. So well then. Two days later, I traveled back home to Germany. It was long travel, like 14 hours or something. Uh, I was in pain everywhere <laughs> because I had a tough match and everything. And yeah, and then uh, I don't know. I asked him, can I have a chance? Can I have, you know, a future with WWE? And again, they said no or not yet or whatever, you know, the question, the answer is. And I fell a little bit into the depression, you know, because... I, I kind of knew the fans love me, you know, but I still not good enough for them, you know. So it it was hard. Like I was in my, I had back in the days, I had just a little room. I lived in a flat chaired thing. So I had like a super tiny room on top of all that misery. And I was there and I was like, oh man, like I want this so bad. And what else can I do? Like even the fans cheering for me and, and still nothing, you know. Um, I mean, even after, you know, like when Triple H went out and the fans were still chanting, uh, we want Jesse, the answer he gave was still like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. when 
Cedric Alexander, for example, he was still there, you know, or May um, Mia Yim last year, like in 2018. He gave her definitely yes, you know, but for me it was like meh, and I was like, oh. Um, but then eventually they gave me a contract, actually, and it was all perfect, and I was about to move to uh, Florida and all that, and I was excited and I was ready, but I didn't pass the, the, the test, you know. I didn't pass the, how you say in English, uh, the, the, the me medical examinations, the, the medical, medical test. Yeah. yeah, I didn't pass it because I had a really bad neck. I kind of knew because you know the, the time in Japan, it took really, you know, a beating on me, and then the whole um, training with uh, with the MMA, it was also really tough for my neck. And I always had like some pain there, but I thought it's normal, you know, because wrestlers they do have pain. And yeah, and then I found out I have like three herniated discs and I needed to fix them. Um, and then I did, you know, and 2018. Well, this, it, you had the surgery, didn't you? So um, I, had surgery, uh, I had like the ugliest scar ever. <laughs> and yeah, I spent 2018 with the recovering. I had like, I have like a piece in my neck right now that's holding all together. Um, yeah, and then 2018 came around, and then I think the final, um, how you say, so they had a tryout in Germany, right, and they were contacting me to help them, you know, to find talents and stuff like this to get an idea, and I didn't hesitate it because I love wrestling, like, no matter what, if I'm in the ring, if I'm not, it doesn't matter, I love wrestling, so I said, okay, cool, yeah, what about you do this and this and that, and I think they were impressed, and I said, okay, you know, she's still helping us, so they gave me another chance, so they flew me into... Pittsburgh, yeah, Pittsburgh, and I had a seven-hour exam, and they were checking all my body, my heart, my knees, my everything, and I said, you're good to go, um, and then they offered me another contract, which wasn't as good as the one before, but it was still something, right? Yeah, I mean, you must have been overjoyed to, uh, after all of the kind of ups and downs, and, you know, the highs of the, the Mayan Classic, and then the lows of having your contract kind of taken away, the neck surgery, getting yourself fit again, and then being offered a contract. That must have been an amazing feeling. And I think yeah. the first time we saw you back was um, at uh, NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool when you were yeah. sitting ringside with Kaylee Ray. I yeah. remember that very, very well. So you must have signed around about that time. And then you were back in the ring for NXT UK a few months later. Uh, now, I want to talk about your time in NXT UK because you had uh, a singles match against... <laughs> yeah, well, I, I do. I, you know, uh, you had a singles match against Piper Niven. You had yeah. uh, other tag matches with Ginny. I think at one point they were even trying to set you up in a feud with Rhea Ripley, kind of two <laughs> big badasses in the ring together. That would have been fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you, you were mostly featured as, as the bodyguard for Ginny, weren't you? I mean, yeah. how, how, how was that role explained to you um, at the very beginning? Because it was it was quite a bit different to the Jassy Gabbett that we saw mm -hmm. um, in the Mae Young Classic and, and probably very different to what a lot of fans were expecting when you got signed. So um, tell, tell us about, about your or NXT UK experience? Well, I didn't have a good time. Like, I have to be honest, like, what happened behind the scenes, you know, behind the whole camera stuff, it was nice. And I have no good things to say about it, so I'm not really talking about it. Um, I just can say it's really unfortunate that some people do not understand that working together is sometimes more beneficial than anything else. Um, yeah, the role, what can I say? It's not my favorite thing, but I guess no one was more creative enough um, to put me in a better role than being a bodyguard. You know, it's too obvious, you know, like, oh, yeah. there's a big girl. What can we do with her? Oh, she's a bodyguard. Yay. You know, um, but I think also it was maybe about competition, you know, like someone didn't want me to be a singles wrestler you know what I mean um but yeah what can I say I'm so grateful that I had the chance to be on tv you know the, the time I had on tv and when the Americans came over it was always a good time I had a lot of opportunity to learn something you know the promos how to work with the camera so that was amazing but yeah the, the training yeah. and everything the experience itself uh it wasn't fun at all 
No, no. And um, uh, like I say, a, a bit of a, a shame, bit of a, uh, a sorry ending because you wanted that WWE dream, didn't you? And it mm-hmm. didn't quite happen the way you wanted. Um, but uh, I've, I've, I've got to ask you about, uh, you've had several TV appearances, haven't you, in Germany and in the UK. Uh, mm-hmm. You was on uh, uh, First Dates, I understand, in the UK, uh, <laughs> yeah. Take Me Out uh, and many others. But uh, I've got a list of question from uh, one of our, <laughs> our friends um, and his name is Matt Bailey. And he asks, uh, how much fun was it to beat up Jack Whitehall on a league of their own a few years back? Now, I think this happened probably in about 2012 or 2013. Uh, yeah. But you was on a league of their own over yeah. in the UK. And uh, he says, how fun was it to, to beat up Jack Whitehall? It was amazing. I re- I still remember um, first I did like some castings, you know, because they didn't know, can we do wrestling with someone? Like, can we do wrestling with a celebrity? Because, you know, there's a lot of insurance stuff. So we were showing them with each other with wrestlers, you know, um, the Eve girls were there, like uh, the Blossom twins were there. So we're doing like slams and blah, blah, blah. And then I remember um, one of these people from a league of their own, they asked me, so you can do this move with anyone, right? I'm like, yeah, sure. Show me on them. And he pointed to a camera guy. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I give him like a snapmare, you know, and like the, the machine gun punches. And he's like, oh, it's, it's not too bad. It's all right. <laughs> and then, you know, we had like two castings around. And then finally, uh, we had like the whole setup at the, at the, at the studio, right? And then Jack Whitehall came and he's like, no, 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 I'm not doing this. Like, no freaking way, right? And then we had to convince him. And we're like, it's not going to be painful, just a little bit, you know, but come on. (laughs) (laughs) And then eventually he said yes. And for me, it was fun, you know, like like pushing him around and everything like we didn't talk about it like he they only told me please do not punch him in the face you know like <laughs> do anything but don't hurt hit his face so oh yeah. <laughs> fantastic yes and i do remember that thinking back because the blossom twins were on there i remember you being on there but uh yes that that was about 2012 but uh, yeah, they uh, a fantastic a question goldberg. yeah they gave me a full goldberg entrance you know like first the blossom twins in the ring and then jack hall white hall he went in the ring oh i can take on the girl girls and he's like no no the girls are tired now you're getting this one you know and then i'm like (laughs) i'm amazing um, I've got another question from uh, one of our Facebook friends, uh, Andy Walters, and he asks, uh, um, who have been some of your favorite opponents that you faced across the various promotions uh, that you've been a part of? So who's been some of your favorite opponents then, Jazzy? Mm, good questions. I mean, I, I always love Japan, like every single one. I'm looking at them right now. I have like posters here. I mean, I love Nanae Takahashi because she was a real strong opponent. Like she teached me by beating me up. <laughs> um, yeah. I There was a girl, her name is Yuzupon. She was a huge star in Japan. Oh my God. Like she made the most money. She had the most fans. She was most beautiful. And I had a chance to have her in a six man tag. I wanted to have a singles match, but it wasn't possible. But I love to wrestle against her. Sarah Stock. I had some matches with her. Sarita from TNA, um, she was amazing. Yeah, so most are ta- uh, yeah, Japanese talents. But of course, Abby Lee, I fought her twice. She was amazing. Kairi Sane, Yoshi Rai, I had them all. Uh, I love them. Yeah. I love every single one of my opponents, you know, like it's every time different kind of fun, you know. I don't take myself too serious and I love comedy matches like for the home promotion. I'm working um championship of wrestling. I'm doing so many crazy stuff. We have like love stories and stuff like this. I love this kind of wrestling, you know, like just entertain the fans. Don't take yourself too serious. Excellent. Um, I've got one more question from uh, one of our viewers, and it's uh, Eric again. Uh, Jazzy, if you didn't become a pro wrestler, uh, what do you think you would have ended up uh, doing uh, working in, uh, as instead? So what do you think your profession would have been if you weren't a pro wrestler? You know, it sounds really hard, and he actually knows the answer because he's one of my <laughs> friends and fans. Like, I chat sometimes with him on Instagram. So the truth is, if I wouldn't be a wrestler, I would be not here. Like I would be dead because wrestling saved my life. And I always say it and it's the truth because when I was a teenager, I had really the hardest time ever. Um, And if there wasn't any wrestling, I would not be here. Um, But now, you know, like for now, because I cannot do wrestling anymore, 
uh, or not as long. I, of course, want to be a promoter, but right now it's not really possible because of the freaking pandemic. Yeah. So I enjoy actually being security. Like I love security jobs, you know, like um, handcuffing people and beating them. <laughs> not just kidding. Um, <laughs> you know, but just, you know, watching places or stay all night in the car and watch places. I really enjoy this kind of work. And I love my TV work, like take me out and, and all that kind of stuff. I love TV work. Like I hope I get more opportunities. Uh, I actually landed two days ago a big role in a movie. So I had a casting and they loved me. Um, and so there will be something big coming up very soon. That's fantastic. That's really, really good news. Right. Mm -hmm. Final question from me then, Jazzy. Final mm -hmm. question. <clears throat> now, uh, because you, you've you've had an amazing life, some some bad experiences and some very good experiences. But above all I else, uh, you know, you really, really love your fans, don't you? Yeah. Um, I do. and, and they uh, have so much love towards you as well. So much. Um, you, you're, you're, you're a bit of a huge role model to so many people all over the world, Jazzy. You really, really are, especially to young girls and to women all over the world. Tell us what your fans mean to you and uh, what would you like to tell your fans who are watching or listening now? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, especially during this very difficult time that we're going through with the pandemic, uh, what, what message would you like to tell your fans who are watching and listening right now? I would love to say thank you that they all follow my journeys, you know, the ups and the downs. Sometimes they see me in this promotion, sometimes there. I love so much that they travel for me a lot. You know, I have like these uh, English fans, you know, they travel to so many places and they sometimes even help me, you know, to get from A to B. So I'm so thankful. Like I'm I'm nothing without them because if they weren't supporting me, I, I would not be a wrestler or like around, right? If nobody cares for me, like, so I'm really thankful. And even that they support me, you know, that they buy my merch or, you know, even writing me sometimes, it just feels me wanted and connected, you know, and I love to hear their story and they listen to my stories. So they're a big, big, big part of my life. And I'm really happy that I have, fans all over the world and I actually really love to meet them like when I'm in America I meet sometimes American fans in the UK or UK fans you know and they're all so different and they have all these different kind of um, stories to tell me and I actually I want to tell this quick um, there's a Go fan ahead. yeah there's this fan from Finland, right? And he wanted so badly to meet me. So he connected with a promoter in Finland and they arranged that they booked me. So he paid the flight and everything. But here's the story. He's not a normal fan. He is like Steve Hawkins. He has only his head, like his whole body is like in a, like paralyzed. And he yeah. only can like think and communicate via computer, right? And I was so shocked. I was like, they brought him to the show in like a big um, bed, you know, it was a bed. And we were standing there and he says that I am his big inspiration. And when he watched me, he feels like he can wrestle, right? And I'm like, whoa, this is so mind blowing. Like I'm looking at this person and I'm so insp ins inspired by him, you know, yeah. because he still has the will to live and he still finds joy and live. and. You know, you and me, we are like, you know, we can do everything. We can walk everywhere. We can eat everything. But we still complain sometimes. Like sometimes we're like, oh, I don't like this. And we should shut up because there are people who are way worse than us. And they enjoy life so much. So they inspire me, you know. So, yeah, like the fans mean the world to me. Like seriously. It's not just a saying. Everybody says that, I guess. But it really does. I, I really feel that way. Of course. And like I say, you're, you're a massive inspiration to people all over the world. You're still being inspired by people every single day. Uh, and I just want to kind of thank you for being a, a, a fantastic guest. But before we let you go, Jazzy, um, an opportunity for you to kind of tell my, my uh, listeners and viewers uh, where they can reach out to you and say hi to you on social media. So if you've got a Twitter or a Facebook, mm -hmm. an Instagram, merchandise or YouTube, where can we find out more about Jazzy Gavin? Well, yeah, I'm the most active on Instagram. So find me on Instagram. I do go many times on Twitter but it's a little bit not so active there um, but if you want tweet me I will retweet it I read all your stuff but yeah go on Instagram and check me out there and I send you all my love thank you that's awesome and uh, any merchandise at all that you want to plug um, or, or any come in 
Yeah, everything on my uh, Instagram. You can check the link. I have a link tree and then you find like everything. You can buy my t-shirts or stuff like this. But I am on the move at the moment. I try to move to a bigger city right now. So it's all a big mess. So if you order like uh, autocraft cards, uh, it maybe takes some time. But if you order t-shirts from um, SL or Pro Wrestling Tees, it will go to you directly. But autocraft starts. I need a little patience with me, please. That's amazing. Well, Jazzy Gabbert, thank you very much for being a fantastic guest. Thank Best of luck with uh, serious sports entertainment. We can't wait to see that in 12 months' time, and uh, we'll catch up with you again soon. Thank you. Our friends over at Powered 4 TV are giving listeners to this podcast an incredible 50% off your first month when you sign up to Powered4.tv and use the promo code Jonners. Powered 4 TV are one of the leading on-demand streaming services in the UK with tons of shows from over 20 wrestling promotions from around the UK and the US including TNT Extreme, Chicagoland Championship Wrestling, DNA Pro Wrestling, Full Force Wrestling, Ignite Wrestling and so many more. There's also plenty more to enjoy including an incredible archive of classic matches, life layers with William Eva, podcasts and so much more. Sign up to Powered4TV today and save 50% off your first month 